Hello friends, welcome back to the discussion on brand management. We have talked about how to structure marketing programs for developing brand equity wherein my orientation was to give you a larger view through lots of examples because we have talked about 4 P's earlier in product management. So, I presume that you would be watching those videos within this course and then building up your understanding on the contribution of 4 P's for developing brand management for, for developing brand equity. Now, I would be taking you towards secondary brand associations, a very interesting subject, a very uh, you know uh, kind of exciting perspective because brand is surrounded by so many things. Let us have a look. See, brand is associated with other brands, then places, things, people and all these you know uh, should I call them elements or associations. All these associations they are a constitutive part of a brand. A brand is inseparable from its associations. So, why not to think in terms of associations with a strategic perspective and steer things around not only developing those associations, but also capitalizing those associations upon. And that is what we are going to understand as far as you know secondary brand associations go. So, let us have a broader look at this and then I will decipher all these things you know uh, one by one slightly quickly. But let us see for example, in other brands, so there are there is an element of ingredients, ingredient of a brand as a brand you know company associations are there in terms of other brands. Brand extensions are also there which are very important and uh, it is a desirable association actually. We focus upon developing brand extensions, we have already talked about this that, that a brand manager actually thinks or conceives in developing brand extensions and, and that this understanding will definitely support us with a very you know uh, important logical aspect in brands life cycle as well. Then there are alliances. Now, look at places for example, country of origin very important thing German engineering remember this many organizations talk about this. So, so many a times if a product and a brand belongs to a particular kind of a country for example, there has been a very long time since we are talking of Swiss watches Japanese electronics and many things from India. Today Indian tourism has become very important kind of a thing as far as country of origin perspective goes and there are several products from India apart from consumer products or food products uh, you know today we have several manufactured products in India which, which are known with the perspective of being Indian and it has been a very tough very uh, you know kind of uh, uh, time taking journey which India has gone through in terms of developing itself as a brand in terms of uh, what it does the research and development, scientific development, education, manufacturing and so on and the brands which are manufactured or developed in India along with an Indian association. So, it has been a longer journey in terms of you know this combination this association we, we can we can have uh, we can name so many today. Then things wherein events causes and then especially events a brand is many a times associated with several events for example, football cricket all these are events IFA you know. So, and then people employees and endorsers endorsers is a very important element of as far as brand association goes many a times brand is recognized by its endorser. So, let us see how it comes up and then we are talking of you know other brand associations in terms of company first of all. 
So, branding strategies are important determinant of the strength of association from the brand to the company and any other existing brand. You see, three main branding options exist for a new product. Create a new brand, adopt or modify existing brand, combine an existing and a new brand for example. So, these are, these are the uh, larger premise of when we talk of company. And let us take an example of ITC e -Chopper. So, ITC has been known for tobacco products largely, but they converted themselves more towards or I should not say converted, but they oriented themselves more towards being an agri business based kind of an organization and e -Chopper became a wonderful element of this brand association. e -Chopper initiative has been a very powerful uh, effort and, and it is a unique model that delivers large societal value for co-creating rural markets with local communities. So, they converted those suppliers from whom they were sourcing uh, their tobacco raw material for sourcing several other products which ITC actually started producing in later stages while connecting them through computer and IT technology. And that is where eChopal came in, you know. And they connected so many villages and so many farmers or uh, you know uh, village communities with them as hub. And then a two-way communication in terms of trade and exchange started happening. And it's a, it's a wonderful kind of an experiment which is now very very successful. And they have established thousands of such stations around villages. Uh, to my knowledge, it is around 100,000 plus kind of, uh, you may check it uh, or on uh, eChopal. So, uh, Mr. Shiv Kumar was, uh, you know, highly instrumental in doing so from the side of ITC and Mr. Y.C. Devishwar steered it when he was heading ITC a uh, few years back. So, so that is that is how they, they went ahead with, you know, as, as far as uh, uh, associating everything in terms of their complete value chain. You see this digital infrastructure enabled even small and marginal farmers in rural India uh, who are many times dealing from the formal markets and, and you know then they started supporting them for quality inputs, productivity and so on. On the other side purchasing whatever they were producing with a different kind of a price back end utilizing it for different kinds of manufacturing they were doing in terms of several products which they started producing and they were producing. Bingo is one of the most popular products and several other products, Sunfeast I think is, is again a very popular product and so on. So, you see and, and uh, this initiative has two uh, infrastructural aspects. One is Chopal Pradarshan Khet that is a customized agri extension service and farmers they get trained over there and Chopal Sagars. So, these are integrated rural service hubs. Now, these are sort of departmental stores or let us say stores uh, in, in several places. I visited one of those uh, uh, when I was going I think towards Sultanpur in uh, Uttar Pradesh and uh, a wonderful place. There you find so many things. Uh, you, you find apparels, you find agri based products, you find tools, you find fertilizers, you find so many things which are being you know facilitated for farmers. So, it is a, it's a uh, sort of a mall and they have different kinds of you know uh, sizes of these uh, Chopal Sagars. So, e Chopal initiative has become a fulfillment channel for a two way flow of goods and services and raised rural incomes. And, and just to mention that this has strengthened ITC as a brand and that is what we are talking of. Now, country of origin a very important kind of an element and I have just briefly mentioned about that you know. So, for example, uh, BMW in terms of being a German car and then Chanel uh, you know from France and there are so many designers who are from Italy and as I said India now has so many names associated with itself including Indian tourism and several other products which India India boasts of in terms of Tata T for example, in terms of software in Tata consultancy services or Infosys and so on and we have a huge software power and India India you see software engineers, uh, management experts, doctors 
originating from Indian schools. They have their name and that is where you know brand association of Indian institutions along with India is coupling up in, in terms of different kinds of effects which it is, it is generating. So, that is where you know uh, this, this uh, uh, geographical area association comes in. Now, again you know uh, you can talk of uh, Chandigarh as a city which actually projected itself to be a beautiful place and then there are several products which got associated with Chandigarh especially in terms of people who wanted to construct their houses around that city and, and uh, that, that, uh, that those areas they came up uh, wonderful uh, and, and so on. See, so, so many times a city is known for its uh, you know beauty, its aesthetics, people want to visit that place and many a times when there are some products manufactured there, so that thing gets coupled up even if you know that, that city is talked about with the perspective of being beautiful only. So, but, but Chandigarh has so many things to its, its uh, you know kind of credit. So, then there are you know uh, Mysore sandalwood and then uh, Mahabaleshwar strawberry, Katputlis of Rajasthan, Firozabad glass and Bangalore blue grapes, Lucknow chicken craft it is one of my favorites and then Bikaner's bhujia and Malabar pepper and so many. You have GIs associated with so many cities now. And, and geographical indicators are uh, one of the most important aspects in today's era basically. So, then channel of distribution, you see as a reason of associations to product assortment, pricing and credit policy, quality of service and so on, retailers have their own brand images in consumers mind. So, from where are you buying the products? There are several markets in Delhi for example, wherein people know that they would be purchasing uh, you know products at a bargain and every city has those kind of markets for example. So, if you have a premium product you might not think in uh, terms of selling your product in those markets which are known for their bargaining actually or, or uh, you know uh, let us say common mass products basically. So, so uh, you if you want to sell your premium products then there has to be a, a premium location then premium retailer and so on and that is where you know brand association comes into being in terms of uh, retailers. Co-branding as I was trying to mention is again a very important element and we are talking of other brand associations as of now and then uh, in, in, in the meanwhile we touched upon places and then keep the track of that, that picture I uh, showed you earlier. So, you see co-branding also called brand bundling or brand alliance, it occurs when two or more existing brands are combined into a joint product or are marketed together in some fashion. It is different or let us say uh, though related but different than ingredient branding. I would be coming back to it later on. But you see there are different ways to co-brand. A new product can become linked to an existing brand. An existing brand can also leverage associations by linking itself to other brands from the same or different company and so on. And, and there can be several such you know. Uh, joint names which uh, you can you can find in terms of for example, Kit Kat, Carnation, uh, Tall House, Drumstick, Crunch and Coffee Made are freestanding brands of which also feature the Nestle brand that serves as an endorser. So, you see you may say that it is an umbrella brand. But then umbrella brand is not projecting itself to be the owner of that particular product, the name of the product is different. But then the uh, you know umbrella brand or the originator brand is actually projecting itself as a co-brand branded or marketed by or sold by or manufactured by this way. So, so there are several elements to it as far as co-branding and, and co-branding in joint ventures we have seen you know it's, it has been a very common kind of a thing when uh, Hero and Honda were together. So, it was Hero Honda and, and uh, they both actually gained through that despite of the fact uh, now they are uh, you know doing separate uh, kind of businesses or should I say they are competitors to each other now, but still 
they were gainers and they are gaining still as far as their branding perspective goes. So, co-branding and uh, you know even after separation works when we are talking of two different organizations that is that is an important thing which one should remember. And then Oreo, Reds, V, Thins, uh, Nilla, Triscuit and Chips, Ahoyle and, and Fig Newtons and these are co-branded with Nabisco. And, and uh, Mondelez is the international owner of all these you know this is a corporate brand it is it's, uh, actually the umbrella brander basically but never named anywhere and uh, this picture uh, you, you can just, just go to their website so it, it will not be so easily visible to you uh, wherein so many you know logos and symbols are there under Mondelez. So that is how you know kind of this, this co-branding perspective and structure goes. And now let us go to ingredient branding Intel inside. So, just a simple perspective around ingredient branding and, and there are several you see people want to know what, what are the ingredients and from where are they sourced. So, so there are several examples to as far as you know uh, what is inside kind of and, and that actually assures the consumer about the end product. So, Intel assures the customer and uh, there, there is AMD also assures the customer for that matter and Android also assures the customer in terms of uh, smartphones, Dolby sound systems. You see cinema halls they still say it is a Dolby cinema uh, sound system in this cinema basically they project it that way and that is where Dolby sound systems they com come in and then several other uh, they are Teflon for example, it is it, it has been a, a synonymous kind of an ingredient or an ingredient brand for non-stick cookware. So, that is how uh, things have been. Then there is an element of licensing. Licensing creates contractual arrangements whereby firms can use the names, logos, characters and so forth of other brands to market their own brands for some fixed fee. It is uh, kind of uh, you know a mode of expansion when you are sure of your brand strength and brand equity when others are sure of your brand strength and brand equity and it further supports in enhancing brand equity by multiplication actually. Although by licensing you have so many conditions that you know the standards the quality because you want your name to be kept up in terms of the delivery to the consumer goes you just do not want anything to be diluted for which you have been known for. So, that is where licensing perspective comes in. Licensing the brand for use in certain product categories prevents other firms or potential competitors from legally using the brand name to enter those categories and so on. So, as I said it is expansion based kind of a thing and Disney is one of the major most examples in terms of its consumer products. See, Disney consumer products, uh, they are designed to keep the Disney name and characters fresh in the consumer's mind through various lines of business. It has been a very intelligent move for Disney entering into the consumer products because once you are inviting people to, to be entertained to Disneyland, on the other side you have cruisers for them. On the other side you have movies, you are producing movies as well, you are integrating the complete entertainment setup into one and you want a whole lot of a package, you know whole lot of a world that is why they call it Disney world. So, whole lot of a world around the entertainment basically. So, there definitely you cannot refrain from putting up you know consumer products, but definitely it may not be your main production area or main business you definitely have entered into that, but then you want it to multiply with the help of other people who can maintain that name and quality. So, that is where you have licensed uh, for you know as far as your product goes Disney toys, Disney fashion and home, Disney food, health and beauty and so on. And you see uh, these consumer products they have a long history actually. Uh, which can be traced back to 1929 when Walt Disney licensed the image of Mickey Mouse for use on a children's writing tablet. So, and you see licensing continues to be an important source of revenue for Disney and uh, 
over a five year period of 2010 to 2015 the data says that disney added a total of dollar 23.9 billion retail sales of licensed merchandise thereby retaining disney's number one position in licensing revenues in united states and the graph tells you about you know consumer product revenue of the walt disney company in fiscal years 2009 to 2018 by segment in billion dollars just visit statista and you will know what we are talking of celebrity endorsements the rationale is that a famous person can draw attention to a brand the famous person is already famous brand wants to enhance upon the fame and the image of the person both they get gel together and both of them they grow definitely brand grows on the basis of engaging that person i have talked about mr dhoni mr bachchan and so many others and uh, virat kohli is also doing so mr kohli is also a great brand ambassador and and so many and then you see i have seen several social organizations or non profit organizations or government organizations also engaging brand ambassadors so for example united nations they engage brand ambassadors to spread the message uh, for let's say child safety or or let's say uh, in terms of you know uh, women security or equality and those kind of things and and several brand ambassadors who are known for that kind of a perspective or they have talked about these subjects they are they have uh, you know an acceptable brand image widely known so they they are, uh, definitely are engaged for these kind of things and so on and and uh, uh gujarat tourism campaign i i never forget so just visit that so a celebrity endorser should have a high level of visibility and rich set of potentially useful associations judgments and feelings and celebrity endorsers can endorse so many products that those messages before their endorsement might not be so meaningful but but after endorsement it strengthens the belief of the customers and so on and uh, we can we can go on and on in terms of you know celebrity endorsements because uh, india uh, india advertising and marketing communication has grown uh, in past two decades it has grown tremendously and global level we have seen several uh, you know celebrity endorsements but in india if you will start counting i don't think that any celebrity largely would have refrained himself or herself from getting into you know endorsements uh, with all due regards there are many who uh, did not go for that but but many sports celebrities and definitely people from films and movies and uh, you know the entertainment business largely they have definitely uh, been known for these kind of things and why not why not it is mutually beneficial for both so that is how things are and most of all it is beneficial for the customer now sporting culture and other events and we are talking of events and this is a wonderful kind of a thing because you would realize that coca cola is a very important gainer in terms of as far as getting associated with sporting events around the world there are several organizations which have actually gained strength because of events and i mentioned about you know sports events and uh, several other events and ifa those kind of events earlier so you see sponsored events can contribute to brand equity by becoming associated with the brand and improving brand awareness adding new associations or improving the strength favorability and uniqueness of existing associations imagine yourself watching a cricket match things are going well you are getting entertained and your favorite player is uh, you know playing well and even if he is not playing well the endorsement is uh, you know uh, up uh, you know for for you to to be visible it remains in your mind that is the objective actually so that is where you know sporting culture and other events they come in the main means by which an event can transfer associations is credibility how credible is the event many a times how likable is the event and many a times how culturally associated that event is with a particular kind of uh, a country or people or community uh, for example india is known for its association with cricket now i was mentioning coca cola so longest standing partner of olympic games you see 
coca cola company they have been a continuous sponsor of the international olympic committee uh, longest should i say uh, and in 2019 it announced it is extending its relationship another 12 years for a total of historic 104 years now that is a very long time and that is where you know coca cola has been actually projecting itself with lots of association in terms of sports and so on then they are associated with paralympic games as well and they have supported those games supported you know uh, several kinds of efforts also and then i mentioned football you see their association with football dates back to the beginning of the last century and in 1958 to 100 plus professional football clubs federations and national teams then there are third party sources marketers can create secondary associations in several different ways by linking the brand to various third party sources and i should not say that rating agencies or organizations are precisely third party because they might be there for their uh, you know they are credible sources they are rating and ranking someone but they might be there for their business as well so so for, but but for example in case of national institutional ranking framework is a government uh, ranking system which is not there for earning but they are a credible source and that association that means being ranked by nirf matters a lot for you and i am happy that iit Roorkee holds a pre prominent place in nirf so so that but but again the point is that that is where you know this association works then there are, there are iso certifications you, you know so many organizations they say that they are iso certified michelin star rating and you see someone says that michelin star chef is coming now that is where that that uh, that association works and uh, you see the point here is let, let me take you to this figure which i showed you earlier and just to give you a glimpse of what it means in terms of brand having secondary associations first let's see that these secondary associations they sometimes are always there that for example country of origin is always there it is up to us to capitalize upon the strength of country of origin so that is where the brand intelligence or intelligence of a brand manager comes in that where to infuse the feeling of country of origin to the advantage of brand in the brand value chain should it be done at the marketing program investment levels for uh, enhancing the customer mindset or should it be done you know uh, for uh, strengthening the market performance as such in terms of when you are going global and you want a larger market share for for your uh, you know product so should it be there basically so country of origin is there but how to use it effectively same is the case with as far as other brand associations let's say ingredient brands intel must have felt that people should know that what kind of a credible business they are into and but but if they will uh, you know just tell people that intel is doing this so people would not know that what kind of a credibility intel provides to uh, its buyers its customers for for whom uh, you are the consumers basically end customers so intel must have you know thought of this for example many a times there are uh, some parts of a particular footwear being sourced by different kinds of organizations many a times we do not know about those but for example in case of uh, eyeglasses calzi is actually projected itself and today we purchase so many eyeglasses having lenses from calzi's and that actually has worked for both the uh, you know uh, the the uh, uh, organization who is actually fitting calzi's glasses and calzi's itself in in uh, uh, you know in totality so that is where the perspective comes in and endorsers we have talked about how would you generate credibility in terms of your message in terms of your product it would be easier 
if you bring a credible brand ambassador and definitely the brand would go uh, grow brand ambassador would be benefited though but brand would definitely be benefited so that is how secondary brand associations can be seen for developing brand knowledge and contributing in brand equity the ultimate objective is strengthening and enhancing brand equity i'll be coming back to you with lots of insights on brand audit brand research that is now we have to understand how all this is understood by the brand managers what do they do what how do they decide that what kind of marketing programs they have to infuse what kind of a secondary association they have to project how should they go about so let's see what do they do i'll be coming back to you in the next session on brand audit and brand research till then goodbye